If you're interested in CSGO, please make sure to check out my second channel Hazard Edit Gaming for CSGO related content I upload there. Thank you. What's up guys, Hazard here and welcome to the promised D4D menu tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be doing the actual behind the scene how to how it works uh, video. And I have changed a bit, or not really changed, but I've added a feature uh, where you can click the button with the mouse and activate and deactivate them. So yeah, let's jump into the how-to part. This time graphical visual menu tutorial. This is about the representation of the button class I created for this menu. You can create it how you want it to be, what parts you want to contain it and what not. And yeah, so this is what mine looks like in an approximate representation. It's not directly copied out of my project. As you can see, mine has an ID, which is uh, different for each individual button. Then it has an index, um, which is an interray for Y and X, but we'll come to that in later slide. Then it has a label. This is basically, yeah, the label as a string. And then I also have its position and its size, but I think I used fixed size for the buttons. Um, and I also have colors, so green is on, red is off and gray is inactive. You can't turn it on if it's uh, gray. If it's, And then I also have font which I didn't use. I didn't use like different fonts for different stuff. I only used different label colors for the selected one which is a little bit brighter. So here's how I use the class of my buttons. I create an array from my button class and add up my buttons into there. And then I have something like a draw void to draw my button. So the rectangle with all the parameters, size and um, position. And then I have a draw font function where I put my font in. And I forgot that you obviously have to put the string in because you draw the text, right? But I must have forgotten it. So this is about what uh, the drawing logic is in my case. So I have basically, you can imagine it to be a table. It's basically a matrix where I have a Y and an X index. And on the left hand side, all X's are zero. And on the right hand side, all X's are ones. And if you had another level somewhere here, you would have X two. And then we have Y, which is basically first, second, third, pretty basic. And here is how the position and sizes are made up, or yeah, it's the position for each individual button. So we start up right here. This is the very first button position. The next one is using the position of the first button and its size. And yeah, the list goes on. They built each other up on based on the previous button position and size. And next up we have a visual representation of what it would look like. So this would be something which looks like my menu and then I can just navigate with my arrow keys which is just reading if a key is pressed or not. So if X is a zero then the other side is invisible and I can navigate down with my arrow keys and obviously something is happening here but I can't see it because my X is zero so I enable that for example go to the right side with my right arrow key and then I can see the other settings and can navigate there as well enable disable and if I go back to here again then it's invisible again and yeah deactivate Boom, so this is pretty much it. Very, very simple, as you can see. I thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Peace out.